Hi there, I'm Dave Russell of Goldcore TV, and in this episode, I'm speaking with silver guru David Morgan of The Morgan Report. And I'm asking him if he believes that the short squeeze in silver is over before it begins, what retail investors really need to do if they want to squeeze the silver market, and how he thinks that it's going to play out for the rest of this year. All this and more on Goldcore TV. David Morgan, welcome to Goldcore TV. Dave Russell, it's great to be on Goldcore TV the first time. Thank you. Now, tell me, we have seen a big buzz in social media around the silver market and the short squeeze over the last week. And it showed promise. There was a lot of ambition there. There were price targets of $1,000. Has it ended before it's begun? What happened? Well, the best I can determine, there was a group called Wall Street Bets, uh, I guess a subreddit group that talked about GameStop. This was a company that was heavily shorted by the hedge funds, about 140% of the outstanding shares. It was a tight float, 50 million. And uh, these people started buying and just basically did a short squeeze and took uh, GameStop to uh, an astronomical level and blew up a fund or two. Then um, it looks as if they've moved over into the silver market, but it's a lot different to short squeeze a stock with a limited float than uh, a commodity. Nonetheless, there's been a great deal of buying. The amount of silver that's gone into the SLV, which purportedly uses you know physical silver to back up their mm. shares, has been roughly the 100 million ounce level over the last three or four trading sessions. Wow. And the amount that the COMEX has in the registered category, in other words, unencumbered silver, not there for long-term storage that the dealers can access is only 150 million. And that's been in, like I said, a three, four day period. So if this continues, you will see, you know, a further squeezing of the physical supply, which is the only way that a real squeeze can take place. The other piece of data that's important to mention, Dave, is that the premiums on commercial bars is up to like $1.40 a bar. Mm. And that's unprecedented. I mean, those commercial bars usually sell very close to spot. Nobody buys at spot. You sell at spot. When you go in and sell through a dealer, a beta, small or a big dealer, usually paid whatever the spot price is. But even an entity like uh, the PSLV or whatever will pay a little bit more than the actual spot price for physical delivery. If you're just taking a receipt, then uh, you're pretty much paying spot price. So we've seen the, you know, we saw a decent run up in silver. It got up over $30 at one stage, just a little bit over $30. And it sold down fairly heavily then after that. And we got back below $27, close down to 26. What happened? Is the short squeeze over before it begins? Fair question. I think a lot of people are asking that, Dave. Uh, I don't think it's over. But it's not unusual to see this type of uh, activity. And what I mean by that, if you go to the back up to the 2011 move in silver that went from the 2008 bottom of uh, about $9 silver, and at that bottom, the premiums on retail product was about you know 30%, very similar to the situation we're seeing right now. And the price went from nine all the way up to 50. So you had like a five-fold increase in price. By the time it started going up, you know, straight up more or less, you started seeing the margin requirements raised, raised again, raised another time and raised again. So it was raised about three or four, maybe even five times and that quells the market. So that's what took place here is that the exchange came out and raised interest or margin rates about 18%. And that's what the exchange demands. So the brokers are free to basically set their own and almost all of them set it a little higher than what the exchange demands. So a lot of them, I would say a lot, I don't, didn't check with all of them, but mm. many are inclined if the exchange says we want to up them by 18%, your broker that you have your contract with says I need a 40% or 50% or whatever. So these people that are on thin margin that don't have the cash ready to pour in to keep their position, get a margin call. And if they can't meet it within a matter of a few days, then they're sold out and that creates a lot of selling pressure. 
So we saw the move up, I think, Monday of 6% and down Tuesday of about 8%. And everyone's thinking it could be over. It's really not over, not based on one retail demand. It's almost uh, Jim Rickard's statement, ice nine. We're almost frozen in the retail side everywhere. I mean, I don't know about Gold Core. I'd like to hear what you are seeing, but uh, almost any major retailer, I mean, people with vast amounts of silver in and out over the years, maybe a 20 year business, 10 year business are having difficulty going into the wholesale market, finding product to sell. And on top of that, the premium I just said on the commercial bars are physical bars, high, unprecedented. And then the amount of buying going in the SLV, unprecedented that amount in this short a time frame. So I would say it's more likely that the short squeeze continues than it's ending. We're seeing now a lot of, we have seen over the last week as well, a lot of interest, a lot of buying and demand in the uh, retail sector, uh, in the small denomination coins and bars. Thankfully, we've got good access uh, to supply it on those. But fundamentally, though, is it possible to create a short squeeze just by buying what are effectively retail products? Is really what's going to happen there, you're going to clean out the dealers and you're actually pushing up the premiums rather than necessarily affecting the underlying spot price? Yeah, I mean, it's very, very difficult. And you kind of hit the key point. The silver market is set on commercial bar prices. And even in the areas that I'm very familiar with, I've studied silver most of my life, uh, the only way to squeeze a market is to buy such a large amount that um, you know the shorts have to cover their positions. And most everyone that's in here buying physicals, buying retail product, which isn't a thousand ounce bars, but that's not true with the SLV. Those are thousand ounce bars. So yes, if you buy enough, just like the GameStop situation, if you buy enough stock, you're going to cause a short squeeze. The problem with silver is there's so many derivatives. You've got all kinds of ETFs. You've got options on futures. You got double or triple up or down the ETFs. You got mining shares. And then it's a commodity that you would potentially see a large mining concern is not necessarily a silver miner, like a BHP Billington or a RTZ or one of these uh, conglomerates that mine a huge amount of silver, but it's really not that big a deal for their bottom line because they, their primary business is, let's say, copper, lead, zinc, or something like that. And silver is kind of a byproduct. They would be very inclined at a pretty good move to hedge and sell forward and they have the product. They would just say, you know, we're gonna sell silver at $38 uh, over the next three years. And here's the amount we can deliver into that contract. So it's not a naked short, it's a, a forward contract that can, that can be fulfilled. So you've got that downward pressure available. Plus you got the banks that, you know, I don't know if you wanna use the word collusion, but they certainly talk to each other and basically know what the, each trading desk is doing. And you've got a lot of the mainstream financial press that's going to do their best to upset the uh, the retail side primarily, but it could happen. Uh, it would just take persistence. It would be something that you'd have to have conviction, and you'd have to see uh, demand on the you know on the commercial bars, which we are we are seeing that. The other problem you've got is what is physical silver? I know that sounds stupid, Dave, but let me explain. Mm. A lot of entities will take a warehouse receipt that in an honest market is as good as the product itself. But sometimes those uh, pieces of paper that are a good receipt for a good delivery bar are never cashed in for the bar itself. So that brings up the question, are you holding a receipt for a bar that's still sitting somewhere and counted as inventory for that place? and holding receipt for the same bar and you're counting it as inventory for your place? Or are you really taking that absolute thousand ounce bar, sticking it where you can touch it? So there's a lot to this market, but silver is a very small market relative to the other commodities. It's the most heavily shorted market of any commodity has been that way for years. And what is the two price? We really don't know because we've had like all of these 
Oh, users, the Silver Users Association that was developed years ago mm -hmm. to kind of um, maintain uh, a good old boys club to make sure that silver sort of behaved the way they'd like it to behave. So uh, silver is used, obviously, in the energy industry. It's used in the uh, medical products industry. It's used in the electronics industry. Um, what percentage of it is generally available for uh, retail purchasers? Not that much. You've got around, depending on which study, CPM or the Silver Institute, uh, roughly 50% is industrial use. Silver Institute around, says around 60%. So the, let's say we'll go with that one. With the 40% that remains, you've got about 25%, which is silver jewelry, which brings you to 65% of the total. And then you've got another 20% or so that is uh, silverware, believe it or not. And I always mm. question that number, but they do the data, not me. Uh, so we'll add 65, 75, 85. So you've got about 15% of the total market that is usually available for investment. And depending on given year and what people think about the silver market, sometimes that whole 15% is taken <clears throat> and sometimes it's not. And what isn't goes into you know, warehouses somewhere because there's always a market and there's people that will buy it at whatever the market price is and they'll stick it on a shelf and warehouse it. But what happened last year was absolutely, again, I'm using, oh, using the word unprecedented, but the amount of silver that went into the ETFs last year was somewhere over 300 million ounces. That is huge. Mm -hmm. We've never seen that kind of physical demand. And that was in 2020. Now, here we come into this short squeeze situation, and I put it in quotation marks because it's mm -hmm. not over yet. and We don't know for sure. But we've seen 100 million ounces in less than a week. Yeah. So if that trend continues, the people on the other side that have sold what they don't have are going to get a religious experience because you really, you know, any common sense person says, well, how can you sell something you don't own? The answer is you're allowed to do it in the futures market. But if you can't make good on it, you're going to have to make good on the contract, which means you'll have to buy it back at a higher price which is exactly what happened in the GameStop situation. And so this campaign that we've seen over the last week, and with a lot of that going after the retail coins and bars, and as a result, we're seeing that a lot of the brokers were, were actually cleared out. On a short-term basis, um, buying the physical through the bro broker is unlikely to affect the short squeeze. But if that is sustained, so when their stocks are replenished, obviously people who are buying physical, if they buy that physical and they're taking they're taking delivery of it and, or storing it, they're taking it out of the the available you know market available for for um, people to cover their shorts on. So, will a long-term effect of this potentially be to contribute to a short squeeze? Absolutely. And there's a huge opportunity here. Now, it's not for someone without some fairly deep pockets, but think about it. If you can buy a commercial bar at uh, $1.50 over spot, so I don't know, I'm going to make up a number 27, 28 and a half, mm -hmm. and the retail market's paying you for a silver round 33, the spread is phenomenal. So all you have to do is take those commercial bars and punch them out in the rounds. Mm -hmm. Easier said than done, but it's not a real tough process either. I've been through several mints in my life. In fact, I've pulled a lever a few times to uh, get the die to press and, and pop out a silver coin or round. But, um, but it would have to be, as you said, sustained. That's the whole idea. So you'd have to let the market, the pressure in the market, provide for more inventory, which will take place if it persists. People, entrepreneurs, will see the opportunity and they will get the equipment in place and they'll make that spread between, you know, let's call it $28 and 33 or 35 or whatever. In fact, someone that might be, you know, with someone with a sense of humor might call it, you know, the great silver crisis on one side and we sh the short squeezers one on the other. I mean, I'm trying to <laughs> throw a little humor in here, but it's a, it's something that is bigger than the Hunt Brothers from my perspective, because the Hunt Brothers was basically the hunts, uh, some savvy people seeing what was going on and floor traders that took advantage of the public uh, all in one swoop. But that was my point being, it was basically a North America, U.S. phenomenon only. It's well known among silver bugs, 
But this time, it's a global phenomenon. Yes. And it's during a worldwide currency crisis where anyone that's awake understands what's happened to all fiat currencies over time. They fail. And one of the best ways to protect yourself from that failure on a financial basis is with precious metals. There's other ways to do it. Obviously, the crypto markets come to the fore and you could have, you know, oil stored or foodstuffs or whatever. I mean, I'm not saying that silver is the only thing that you can get, but on a per unit basis, as far as being undervalued and recognizable and universal, it's one of the best. So what's your feeling about how this actually plays out then towards the end of this year? Oh, boy. Ah, put me on the spot. The, the truth is I do not know. Right. My gut feel is there'll be something in the middle, something maybe no one's thinking about right now. Could be where the exchange says, all right, silver is a strategic metal. We're now in a war because it's a war metal. Uh, no more retail. Uh, the commercial bars will no longer be used for retail inventory. You're going to uh, use it for the uh, military industrial complex only. That's a far-fetched one, but I'm talking off the top of my head. I know that no one ever talks about the amount of silver used by the military, and it's a rather significant amount. It's one data point I'd love to have, but no one can get. That'd be one. Another one would be something along the same lines that they'll never admit they defaulted, but they would raise the prices of the uh, futures contracts to where it's par. And that would be where the futures market really doesn't exist anymore. It's a cash only market. And that's kind of what I would like to see. I mean, you used to have milk or eggs in the futures market. You no longer have them in the futures markets. It's a cash only market. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much a free or fair market or at least fairer market. And that could be a way for them to back out kind of gracefully, at least in my opinion, because it's say, look, there's too much going on. You know, they will never use failure or, you know, but they will, they could, I don't say will, they could say, you know what, we're out of the futures business. It's going to be a cash market. It's a private market. Those that want to create a hedging facility will be the private market, which is, in my view, better, probably fairer. Could be a mining company, for example, taking on the other side, saying, yeah, okay, we'll take it at that price and we'll, you know, deliver in the future, that type of thing. So I think that's a possibility. Is there a probability? No, it's not. But you're asking the unknowable here, and I'm fairly knowledgeable about this market, so I'm giving you some of my thoughts. The last one would be, not through the COMEX, but it would be like a huge uh, situation where someone stores for uh, investors. And somebody says, you know, I'm moving from uh, this country to that country, ship over my uh, $260 million worth of silver. And they're caught with their pants down. They don't really have it. It's been paper only, and they've been paying storage for 10 years. If something like that were to occur, you might see you know, some real problems. And, and the last one would be that the clearinghouse is supposed to make good on the, the broker network on the COMEX. They're sort of the backstop to the backstop. And they don't have any reserve to take care of business. So if somebody defaults within the organization of the CME in silver, they're going to have their good old buddies you know, help them out. But if a few of them failed, uh, the backstop again would be the clearinghouse. And if they don't have product, then the whole system could be, let's say, clogged up. And then they would probably make some type of determination. Certainly use pretty words, acronyms, and propaganda to cover it over. It'd obviously be our fault. It'd be the speculator's fault. I mean, why should you get what you pay for? I mean, yeah. you know, oh, what a concept. So for asking what you bought, you know, it's going to be our fault. There'll be no doubt about that in my mind if this short squeeze really takes place. So be prepared mentally for that. But um that's about as far as I can go. I could go on all day. It'll probably be something different than all those things. Is it really going to take place? I'd give it about a, at this point, I'd give it, I, you know, if you asked me this about three days ago, I so said, you got about a 10% probability of a true short squeeze happening. Yeah. With what I've seen over the last few days, I'd say you've got about a 50, 50 chance of it happening. I'm, I'm up in my, uh, I'm dialing in on this. I mean, if these people are serious and it looks like they may be, 
they could cause some real pain to people that have sold stuff they don't have. And David, where can the GoCore TV community and subscribers learn more about what it is that you offer? Yeah, just go to the main landing page, themorganreport.com and go up to the blog tab and pull down the blog tab. Everything I do for the public domain is there. And, uh, <laughs> and keep on buying silver. Let's see what happens. <laughs> right. Well, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the show notes of this video so people can just click on that and go to your site. Uh, but for now, David, thanks for joining us on GoCore TV. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you for watching this episode of Goldcore TV. Like and share this video with people that you believe need to hear it. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified every time we upload new content. And to stay up to date with all precious metal related news, go to goldcore.com.